Hey guys, this is Wes over at FreshSaltFlyFishing.com and today we're going to be tying up a pattern that isn't necessarily on our website um, at the moment, but that we've been tying up um, pretty frequently in, in preparation for a trip to the Bahamas. Um, it's a shrimp pattern that we're tying for bonefish, <clears throat> but I do believe it will work uh, well on redfish as well as trout and snook down in Tampa Bay um, and other parts of the country. Um, not sure what we're calling it yet. Um, it's similar to a coyote ugly, um, pretty bushy. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So first I've just started with some pink um, UTC 140 thread. I like the 140 just because you can be a little bit more liberal with the thread wraps and don't have to worry about crowding. Um, the next material we're going to do right on that little base that we tied is I'm just going to figure eight some um, medium bead chain eyes and I like the brass. I think that the medium bead chain brass eyes kind of give you a little bit more stealth um, and I think that's kind of the name of the game when going for bonefish is you want to be a little stealthy. Alright, so we're going to get that nice and secure. Make sure you do your wraps underneath the bead chain but above the shank and that's going to create the cradle allows your bead chain to be secure. Now before I um, move on I would normally drop a dab of like Loctite or Zapagap or super glue right here. Um, I think that really prolongs the life of your of your bead chain and of your fly in general. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a couple strands of crystal flash. Um, I like to use a good bit. I think I'm not really going to put too much flash in the fly itself, so I, I like it for the feelers right here. I'm just going to add um, one side of it, and then if I could tie it down right, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over, tie the other mirror end on the back. And um, in terms of the length here, it's kind of personal preference. This isn't really going to affect the fly too much. I think it just, um, when the fish comes in from behind, it's going to get a nice little flashy view. And this is more of the feelers of the shrimp. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it about an inch, a half inch or so. Um, and then I'll mess it up a bit just to get them all the fibers to stand out. Make it look more like a feeler than anything. So the second material we're going to be using is the barred grizzly hackle. Um, this is natural. Uh, you can use tan or green or purple, whatever you want. I prefer the natural look. I think that's um, a lot better. And we're actually going to use it in two different ways. The first way we're going to do is we're going to palmer um, a small portion of a hackle feather forward, um, which is how we're going to start. So go ahead and tie in your your barred grizzly hackle, um, tip first, tip towards the eyes, get it nice and secure. These tend to slip on me a little bit, so I'd crank them down a little bit more. Trip off your excess, really secure that end. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip my um, thread over the eyes just to get it out of the way. So it wants to go this way and it's important when palmering any feathers that you pull the fibers back every time you make your half wrap half wrap go pull really tight wraps you don't want this um, the palmer to slip so I'll do a couple real tight once I'm pretty confident I'll trim my excess. I'm really gonna come back onto the feather because I want it to be um, not as fluffed out as it is now. I want it to slim down a little bit because I'm gonna add some more materials. Um, so what I'm gonna do before I start winding back is I'm just gonna pick out all the little hairs that have maybe gotten trapped in the palm ring process. And there will be a couple. No matter how hard you try, you're gonna get a few. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna walk my thread back on the material, kind of hold it in place and walk my thread backwards. Alright, and then once I kind of get to the spot I want, you see how it kind of slimmed down a little bit, it's not as bushy. That's kind of what you want. You don't want too bushy because it's going to look weird. So, really tie that off, share it up, make this transition a little bit smoother. 
All right, and now I'm gonna go back to the grizzly hackle, but before when I used, uh, I used these larger feathers um, for the palmering. And now I'm gonna come back and I have a little section that has a lot of really small feathers. Two small feathers with uh, similar tip sizes. I think that's the important part. They just gotta be kind of the same, they don't have to be the same length, but the tips have to be the same general shape. All right, I'm gonna put them next to each other. And I'm gonna size it up. I want, these are gonna be your claws or um, some extra feelers or you know, something like that in the crustacean. I'm gonna size it up. I want it to be about, I don't know, a half to maybe a third of a length longer or a third of an inch longer than, um, than the feeler tip, the tips of your feelers. Let's right behind where I want to tie it in. So now I have those tips exposed. I'm gonna take one of them. And um, a lot of people would splay, which is when you take it and it faces outward. But I'm going to face them inward. So I'm gonna grab it, a loose wrap, a couple tight ones. Really sure it up. Nice and tight. Don't want it to mess up. I'm gonna take our other feather and do the same thing on the other side. Making sure they're um, the same length. So it looks good to me. Do a loose wrap. Get in the spot. And then a couple more tight ones. I'm gonna check it. Secure it. Okay. I'm gonna clip my excess. Make a little body. Um, all this is going to be covered up in the end, so even if it's ugly, it doesn't matter. If you have a rotary vise to flip the flip the fly, but since I don't, I'm going to have to pull it out by hand. And we're going to rotate it so the hook points up. All right, and now I'm going to take um, and make these myself. Um, and they're not hard to make. You can also buy them at pretty much any fly tying store um, ever. <laughs> um, but they're epoxy or mono epoxy crab eyes. All you do is you burn a little end on the end of a piece of mono and then you dip it in some hardest hole or glue or something like that and let it dry and it gives you a little crab eye that you can paint any color you want. I like the black especially for um, spooky fish. We, we go with that. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie one on each side. Um, I'm gonna keep the eyes kind of away um, from the main stuff by crimping them. So just kind of pushing it down and physically bending the mana. It's gonna help it stick out. Yeah, that's what you want. You don't want it to bury itself in the other materials. You want it to stick out, and look like an eye. So tied one in. I'm gonna come over and do the same thing, making sure that they're both pretty close to the same length. I want it to be as close as possible. I'm work my way down in there. There we go. Maybe a little bit more length on this one. Okay. Do the same thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna crimp it against the side of the hook. Get it to stand up. This will help me. Gauge the length, and a little bit more on this side. All right, looks good. I'm just gonna share it up. Um, we are almost ready to finish it up, but first we're gonna add our first set of legs. So I like these. Um, these are just silly legs. I think they're made by Hairline. Um, they're crystal, flash, clear, and then hot tipped. Um, Anything natural looking-ish. I mean, I'm, I know that orange and crystal flash probably isn't the most natural color, but um, I like that. I, th I think it gives a nice compliment to the fly. One side, tie them in, right behind the mono eyes. And like I said, it doesn't have to be pretty. This is all gonna get covered. And then I'm gonna come around the other side do the same thing, 
Take the orange tips from the same set of legs. And I'm gonna capture them. One wrap, and then I'm gonna physically place them where I want. And I'm gonna secure them down. All right, and I'm not gonna cut this. So you're gonna see I'm gonna have a loop right here. I'm not gonna cut it just yet because it's gonna make it a little bit easier to work with my other materials if I leave them uh, compact. They're not gonna get in the way as much as I as, as they normally would. Up from the store an EP tarantula brush. So I think, or EP foxy brush, excuse me. Um, 1.5 width seems to be good. I'm gonna trim off a lot of it. This is the, oh gee, I don't even know what color this is. This is the, UV Coyote, so Coyote Ugly, hence the name. Um, and what I'm going to do is, if you look at the brush, it's going to be pretty fuzzy, but there's going to be a general direction of which the tips are kind of starting to point. And you notice that where my finger is right now is a smaller taper, and it kind of gets wider as I move to the uh, to the right here. So I'm going to tie in tip first. Um, where all these fibers are pointing, I want them to point back towards the eyes. I want it all to move this way. I want all the fur to kind of cover up this point and move all the way back towards the eyes. So I'm going to tie that tip in just like that. Make sure you get it nice and secure. A couple of real tight wraps. And this is when you really pays off to smooth the taper out. It's going to make your pomering days much, 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 much easier. Alright, so now I've got it where I want it. Do the same thing I did before with the grizzly half. I'll kind of pull my thread up. Now I'm going to build a little bit of a pink head, which is why we use the pink thread. I think um, all the other wraps are hidden, but the head is a little hot spot for the fish to look at. And then I'm just going to tease this, um, this material around. I'm just going to make sure it's all fluffed up and sticking out and there's nothing really high and underneath. Um, at this point, you can go ahead and tie in some other legs, which I, I will. I'm going to tie in one strand instead of two, um, and I'm going to tie it in with the uh, little the opposite of the way I tied them in before. So I'm going to tie them with the orange tips um, facing backwards. And so what I'm going to do, neat little trick, is I'm going to have this um, leg on the on the tying thread like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull them tight to the material or to the hook and I make my wrap. They're hanging on one side and I can pull the other side over and finish them down. And then kind of, I want them to kind of sit low, I don't want them to ride high. So I want to pull them down a little bit, clean up my head. Okay. My bobbin is slipping around. Then I'm gonna whip finish. This is when you're uh, you're done with your fly. So half hitch or whip finish. However you want to finish up your, however you like to finish up your flies. Do about four turns on my whip finisher. Then I'm gonna come back after I finish grooming and hit it with some uh, some clear cure. So right now I'm just gonna go back, fluff it all up, make sure. You know, we don't got anything stuck in there. Want it to look real nice and neat and uh, buggy. You know, you want it to look good for some fish. They always say you're pickier than the fish are, but I don't know. I've come to find the fish can be pretty picky. All right, so once I have that, um, this is when you need to be really careful. It's really easy to snip off legs and eyes and claws and stuff like that. What you want is you want to make the hook gap more exposed. Obviously, I can 
catch my finger on it here, but if a fish goes to bites it, you know, that's about as big of a gap as it gets. Um, which is not enough, honestly, so I'm gonna hold these legs out of the way and I'm really gonna go close. Once you think kind of got it right, it looks pretty good to me. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim my legs to length. So for the front legs that we tied back against the eye, I'm just gonna cut it right to where um, that orange tip starts. I don't want too much orange. I want that clear to be my primary color there. Right where that orange starts to get intense, I'm gonna snip them. And for these, I'm gonna go, oh, I don't know. I'm just gonna cut the, I want these to be kind of long. I think that kind of aids in it. So I'm just gonna cut pretty much the back loop off, just, just so get them separate. And uh, yeah, after that, come back, hit it with some clear cure around the eye and uh, yeah there you go you got a little fresh salt coyote ugly right here good looking fly pattern good for uh, bonefish trout redfish snook awesome pattern uh, make sure you check out the website freshsaltflyfishing.com you can always uh, or freshsaltfishing.com, excuse me. You can always drop us a line at freshsaltflyfishing at gmail.com. Ask us about, um, you know, fish or fly patterns, anything like that. We can always do custom stuff for you, so let us know.